Don't worry, your boys got this. Uh -oh. <laughs> Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Hello, hello, welcome to the video. This video is based primarily on the books Australian Big Cats and a Natural History of Panthers by Michael Williams and Rebecca Lang, and Mystery Cats of the World Revisited by Dr. Carl P. N. Schuker. Any other sources used will be listed below. I think most are familiar in some capacity with the British Big Cats, supposed black panthers and other out-of-place felids said to be lurking the countryside of Britain, with some even reporting attacks from these animals both on livestock and people. However, by comparison, no one seems to talk about Australia's panthers roaming the continent, though it's easy to see why. Britain has a much larger population and has been around much longer, so it's easy for legends to spread to other countries and have much more popularity built up over a larger period of time. Australia, on the other hand, is a relatively young country and has much less people, leading to not as many cryptids and legends forming. Yes, I will admit there are people who have made some videos on the Australian side of Mystery Cats, but most videos I've come across are very shallow in terms of information or simply recordings of news reports. So upon getting my hands on free books containing information on the subject, thanks mum, I decided to cover the Mystery Cats myself in more detail than other YouTubers. And I wanted to start my own coverage of the Mystery Cats of Australia by going over the most widespread theory on the subject, the American Airmen Theory. The story goes that during World War II, when US forces came to Australia, they brought all sorts of mascots, specifically Black Panthers, and due to them being told to destroy them by commanding officers but had become too attached, or the cats going from being cute and cuddly to urine spraying roaring aggressive creatures with pointy bits galore, they were dumped in Australia. And now, said cats have formed a breeding population that has spread out across the country and are responsible for livestock deaths and at least two reports to my knowledge of people being attacked. Or have they really? First, when it comes to evidence, there's what looks like on the surface to be a decent amount of evidence supporting the theory. As an example, according to Australian Big Cats, in 1969 an anonymous Royal Australian Air Force source living in Bayard Duck came forth about the mystery cats. He claimed he was stationed at a joint Australian-US camp at Mount Gambier. At the camp, the Americans showed him and other Australian military men small animals who would later find out were puma cubs. Word of this would reach higher-ups and the men were told to destroy the cubs. Sometime after, the Americans asked the Australians if there was any rough country they could explore, not wanting to tell the Australians they were just going to dump the cubs in the wild. Alongside that, there have been other reports of people coming forward, such as a man by the name of Len Barber. Barber claimed that during World War II, he caddied on the Kew Golf Course in Melbourne and often talked with quite a few US soldiers who play there in their spare time. A couple he talked with, according to him, were handlers for Black Panther mascots. One time, he asked one what they planned to do with the Panthers once they got back to the US, and they simply replied saying they couldn't take them back because of quarantine laws and planned to release them in the jungles nearby. When he replied saying there are no jungles in Australia, they just said they'd dump them in the forest somewhere. Barber also mentioned in a message he sent to Williams and Lang that the Americans were known to fire off shots from the trains they came in on at farmer's sheep for fun. To me, that's him basically saying they didn't care for this country and wouldn't care if they let a dangerous animal like a big cat, or multiple of them, loose in it either. There are other reports like these, but now I want to point to some problems with the theory. It seems like the theory has gained an almost mythical proportion across the Great Southern Land, to the point it's even extended to New Zealand as an explanation for their big cat sightings. As I remember Carl Schuker describing it in his book, Mystery Cats of the World Revisited, it's the answers for everything solution when it comes to the Mystery Cats of Australia. However, just because it's an easy solution to answer the question of why a family's cat in 1999 was found dead, their horse was going berserk, and 50-something strange footprints were found all over the top of their house and yard, doesn't mean it's the right answer. First problem I think should be noted is that sightings in Australia are not just limited to black panthers, which aren't their own species, but colour morphs of leopards and jaguars by the way. If you read chapter 10 of Australian Big Cats, titled Rock Dogs and Top End Tigers, you'll be aware about stuff like the Queensland Tiger or Yarray. Some theorise it is the Phylocene, or Phylocaleo still living in the forests of Queensland somewhere, whilst others claim it's tree kangaroos or an unknown large species of quoll. So the Panthers released by American Airmen theory doesn't solve that problem. And then there's the Warragals. 
Warrigal is an Aboriginal word for dingo, yes, but according to Shuka's book, it's also reportedly used for lion-like animals said to be roaming around near the Blue Mountains. While with the Warrigals, you could argue that they're just lions that have escaped, with the Queensland Tiger, it's a bit harder to do so, but I'll talk about those in their own videos another time. Another thing I want to bring up when it comes to flaws in the theory is that of the time frame. Unless you never learnt about history, you know World War II went from 1939 to 1945. Meanwhile, there have been sightings of these cats, whether it be the Queensland Tiger, the Royal Gulls, Black Panthers or Puma-like animals, since the 1880s. Some have theorised that in the 1800s, since European settlers brought animals from Europe to Australia to try and make Australia a mini England or mini Europe, that a man by the name of Samuel Wilson introduced big cats to the continent. Wilson being a member of the Climatisation Society of Victoria, basically meaning he partly helped give us invasive pests Australia is still dealing with today. However, as the authors of Australian Big Cats point out, based on their research, it remains nothing more than pure speculation that Wilson brought any such animals to the country, despite supposed claims of evidence held by government authorities. Getting back to the US Airmen theory, I have a couple other things that poke holes in it. According to Australian Big Cats, Dr John Henry from Deakin University, Victoria, ran a study into the sightings in the Grampians and found that two US squadrons, the 35th and the 46th, had Black Panthers as their emblems. Both were in the Grampians for a bit before being moved to Queensland and other parts of the Pacific afterwards. So going off of this, each probably had at least one Black Panther if the emblem is any indication of their mascot, and it's not just something they picked because they thought a big cat would look cool. This for me brings up the question of if they owned Black Panthers, what are the chances they let them go in the same area, and what were the chances one was male and the other female? I know that might sound picky, but it's an honest question, and as far as I see it, it's a slim chance one had a male and the other had a female, and they both let them go in the same area. And finally, I recall Williams and Lang writing on page 303 of their book that you'd think there'd be widespread newspaper articles and reports of practically every second US regiment that came to Australia had a big cat or multiple of them. But they read through several articles on the subject of military animal mascots in Australia and found nothing on big cats. To conclude this video, I think the best way to put it is that there could be some partial truth to it. Perhaps there was some sightings that resulted from US airmen letting big cats out in the wild, but it seems like the whole event has been blown out of proportion and overhyped. It cannot be used to explain the origins of the big cats said to prowl the great southern land, no matter what sort of jokes Isaac Butterfield makes about Yowie genitalia in his video searching for these animals himself. As actually the female Yowies, they use their big hairy f***s to cut those right and up. And for those who think this means that the entire idea of mystery cats lurking in Australia is completely debunked because the airman theory no longer is a valid explanation, I recommend you re-watch this video and pay closer attention. Like I said earlier, the airmen theory can't be used to explain the Queensland Tiger or Warrigals, and on top of that, it can't explain sightings of Pumas and Black Panthers pre-World War II. There's a reason why Williams and Lang ended their book's 14th chapter by saying they believe something is out there in the Australian bush. It is clear there is more to the Australian big cat legends than US airmen, and I'll make sure to cover such things in future uploads. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time I upload.